Okay, so this video is going to cover chapter 5 of geometry, uh, specifically section 5.1 to 5.3. Uh, by the end of this video, you should know how to find the measures of angles in many triangles, um, as well as know a number of new conjectures about triangles. Okay, so the to start off, the triangle sum conjecture. Uh, pretty simple, the sum of the measures of the angles within a triangle are 180 degrees. Um, this is going to be super useful when you're trying to find the measures of angles within a triangle. Um, the third angle conjecture uh, states that if two angles of one triangle are equal in measure to two angles of another triangle, then the third angle in each triangle is also equal. So essentially if we have this angle right, or this triangle right here, and this triangle right here, and we know that this angle is congruent to this one, this one is congruent to this one, then we also know that this one is congruent to this one. So our first practice problem, if we have this triangle right here, um, and we're given these two angle measures, and we're asked to find y, then we know that y is going to be 180, minus 90 and minus 22 because um, these angles are all going to add up to 180 so the measure of y is going to be 180 minus the two other ones so when we do the addition here or subtraction here uh, we come out with 68 degrees so some more vocab, um, an isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two sides of the same length. So it'll look something like that. Um, within a isosceles triangle, the vertex angle is this angle, the angle between uh, the two sides of equal length, the base is the side opposite the vertex angle, and the base angles are these two angles um, adjacent to the base. So now we have some conjectures about isosceles triangles. So the isosceles triangle conjecture states that if a triangle is isosceles, then the triangle has two congruent angles. Uh, we also have the converse. Um, if a triangle has two congruent angles, then it is an isosceles triangle. So essentially what this is saying is that since these two sides are equal, that creates two angles here that are also going to be the same size. And this is no matter how you draw the isosceles triangle, these are always going to be equal. Um, so then we have equilateral triangle conjecture which states that an equilateral triangle is equiangular and conversely an equiangular triangle is equilateral. So what this is saying is that if we have our equilateral triangle here then that also means that it, it is equiangular. Um, so what we can kind of draw as a conclusion from all this is that if you have congruent angles or congruent sides then the opposite sides from them are also going to be congruent. And this applies here to all of them. And we also learned in the past that in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So obviously it will be equiangular. Okay, now we have another conjecture, uh, the triangle inequality conjecture, which states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of a third side. So this makes a lot of sense because um, say you had one side, for the two um, other lengths to not be greater than, they would have to be equal to or less than, well they couldn't form a triangle. Um, they just wouldn't be able to connect. Uh, even the smallest triangles, they have to be greater than because if they just added up to the third length, they would just form a line. Uh, so if we do some practice here, um, if we have some sets of numbers, we 
we can tell we can see if um, these are going to be triangles or not. So here, um, the two smaller sides, eight and five, are going to add up to thirteen, which is going to be bigger than the largest side. So that's going to work. Uh, that is going to be a triangle. Um, here, uh, three and four add up to seven, so that's not going to be a triangle, that's going to be rather like a line, um, so not a triangle. Uh, and then 10, 11, and 20, if you add up the two smaller sides, 10 and 11, you get 21. So while that's going to be a very skinny triangle, it will work. Okay, this next conjecture is the side angle inequality conjecture which says that in a triangle, the lengths of the sides of a triangle are unequal in the same order as the measures of the angles opposite the sides. So to clarify, if we have a triangle like this, um, we can see that obviously uh, this is going to be the longest side, uh, and that's going to be across from the biggest angle. And then this is going to be, so this is going to be the longest side, biggest angle, and this is going to be the second biggest side, and this is going to be the second biggest angle. And then this is going to be the smallest side, which is going to be across from the smallest angle. Okay, so now we have a bit more vocab. So say we have a figure like this. Uh, so we have a triangle, and then we have this exterior angle. So this is going to be the exterior angle. Um, it's, it extends the side of a triangle um, and forms an angle. Uh, and then this right here is going to be the adjacent interior angle. And there are going to be two remote interior angles, which are the two other ones. And then we have a conjecture about this figure which uh, the triangle exterior angle conjecture, which states that the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So if we call this angle A and angle B, we call this angle C, then the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C. So now we're going to do a uh, practice problem that really implements all of the things that we've learned so far in this video. Um, so we have two parallel lines, and then we have a right angle and a 22 degree angle, and then we have to find all of these angles. So, okay, um, so this might look daunting, but it's actually pretty simple. Um, so, we can see that since this is perpendicular here, it's also going to be perpendicular here, so A is going to be 90 degrees. And then we can easily find B because we know that if A is 90 and this is 22, then B is going to be the remaining angle needed to uh, add up to 180. Uh, so uh, then we can say, so 90 plus 22 is 112. Um, 180 minus 112 is going to be... Um, 68, so B is going to be 68 degrees. Um, <clears throat> then, um, so B and C are going to be supplementary. So then we can say that uh, C, since we just did this equation, is going to be 112. Um, we can see that C and D are going to be alternate interior angles. So then D is also going to be 112. Um, D and E are going to be supplementary, or we could also say that E and B are alternate exterior angles. So this is going to be 68 degrees. Um, and then uh, we can say, 
Oh, and another thing we know is that these two sides are congruent. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Um, so now we know that F and G are going to be congruent. And that's really helpful in finding out their measures. So we already have E is 68 degrees, and we know that it adds up to 180. So say we put X instead of F and G, because they're, they're the same. We have 180 equals 68 plus 2x, because they're going to be the same uh, measure. So then we can subtract 68, so that's 112 equals 2x, and then we can simplify, and that's going to be x equals 56. So now we know that both f and g are going to be 56 degrees. And now we're just missing h. Um, and that we can solve pretty easily. Um, we know that if we find this angle right here, then these are going to be corresponding angles. So, and this is going to be supplementary to G, um, and it's going to be 124, and then so is H.